Hello, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Sugesh. The problem in developing country is it is not so much of uh, carbon emission, but it is more towards pollution. You know, because people uh, after using plastics and plastics are used uh, a lot in all kinds of our daily life. For example, when we buy tetare, we put it in a you know plastic bag with a straw, and then after drinking, we just throw away the plastic bag. So this kind of single-use plastics are causing a lot of problems in developing countries. Uh, so. Pollution is the problem. So because of that, biodegradation is thought as one of the option to minimize this kind of pollution. General name, uh, basically plastic means you know uh, plastic materials, but bio means something that comes from uh, living organisms. You know, uh, it can be enzymes, or it can be processes that uses uh, part of the. Uh, products or components of uh, living organisms. It can be plant-based, it can be uh, something like uh, you know crab shell which is also a kind of polymer. So all these living organisms uh, are categorized as bio. So any kind of plastic that uses any components of living organisms or any kind of plastics that are made from enzymes from living organisms, you can uh, you know, technically call them as bioplastic. You tend to think this is biodegradable, but actually it is not biodegradable. So again, just like in the case of bioplastic, bio means some contribution from living organism. So if there are no living organism involved in the process of degradation, you cannot say it is biodegradation. So for example, you have a, a OXO degradable plastic. So this breaks down, you know, when you leave it in the environment, under sunlight or, you know, anywhere under exposure to oxidizing condition, then this material will break down into smaller pieces. But this is strictly nothing to do with living organisms. So, so this is where uh, you know, a lot of materials, are, you know, uh, are confused to be uh, thought as biodegradable, but they are actually not. So currently, most of the plastics, bioplastics that are available in the market, actually they are not biodegradable. Okay, they, they break down to a certain extent due to chemical oxidization or UV or sunlight and all, but they are not biodegradable. So this causes a lot of problems like bio and what they call uh, nano plastics or microplastics, which ends up in the ocean and you know comes back to our food chain and then it comes back to, to us. A, you know, like polylactic acid, uh, it is a bioplastic which is made out of uh, uh, lactic acid which comes from uh, living organisms. But once uh, PLA is, uh, lactic acid is polymerized, it becomes uh, polylactic acid. And polylactic acid naturally does not, is not present in the environment. It is something that is uh, invented by human being uh, and it is a chemical process and therefore there are no natural uh, organisms or enzymes which can degrade uh, PLA efficiently. Of course there are enzymes which are not specific, they may cause some uh, degree of degradation to PLA but these are not uh, efficient enough. PHA is another class of uh, bioplastic. This PHA uh, in long, I mean uh, the full name is polyhydroxyalkanoid. This is actually a kind of a polyester that is uh, synthesized by microorganisms. So just like uh, starch that is produced by uh, plants, uh, microorganisms produce PHA as a storage compound. So when they have excess amount of uh, food in their environment, uh, microorganisms will assimilate this uh, excess amount of food and then store in their uh, body. So, which means that when the microorganisms need to use this PHA, they will be able to break it down and hydrolyze it and metabolize it as a food source. So that is why PHA is a, is, is a truly 100% biodegradable uh, plastic. And PHA is also a thermoplastic, which means that you can process PHA just like how you can process PLA. 
uh, you can use the conventional plastic processing uh, instruments to process uh, PHA. And once it is processed, once you make uh, material out of PHA, uh, after use, when you discard PHA into environments uh, that have microorganisms and that is conducive for the microorganisms to grow and to, to use the PHA, all the PHA will be uh, completely degraded into carbon dioxide and water. So it is a complete mineralization process. So this is why uh, PHA is very different from PLA. So PLA is not a natural material, so there are no uh, enzymes which can efficiently degrade uh, PLA. So that is why if you look carefully at PLA, uh, it is mentioned that PLA is compostable. You know, it is not actually uh, truly biodegradable, but it is actually compostable. So under composting conditions, uh, PLA because of the high heat, it can break down into smaller pieces. And then the smaller pieces can, you know, over some period of time, be utilized by for example, PLA. So PLA, I know in Japan there are many companies that are using uh, PLA for uh, packing their strawberries. You know, strawberries comes in this. Uh, normally, they are packed in polystyrene uh, containers uh, because they are transparent and you know you can see you know uh, because of them. And PLA is now being used uh, to, to pack uh, this kind of uh, fruits. And it is suitable because uh, PLA is stable under low temperature. It is not suitable for our climate in Malaysia because our climate is hot and humid and PLA is not stable under that condition. But in Japan, for packaging fruits like uh, strawberry uh, and they normally kept in under cool condition, uh, it is already being used uh, in, in Japan. Uh, it all depends on the property. Yeah. Like, like PLA, you know, the, those who are in the plastic industries, they know plastics are processed using a heat thermal, so they have a melting point. So some materials, uh, the melting point is very high, you know, like PPE and PE and all, you know, it's above 200 degrees. So they are very stable. Even you can use uh, PPE-based uh, material to pour hot water, you know, like nothing will happen to the material. You see. But PLA, no. PLA, the melting temperature is about 70 degrees, you know, so if you put hot water, it will shrink. You know, and uh, so all different types of uh, polymers, they have different properties. Uh, which I think uh, the industry knows and it is only used to make products that can withstand you know, that kind of conditions. But PHA is uh, the melting temperature is actually quite high, it's more than 100 which is more stable compared to PLA. When it comes to polymer processing, see like we are more in the synthesizing, we actually produce the material. That is only part of the puzzle. Uh, in order to make it into a final product, Processing comes in. So processing is another big issue. Right? Uh, even like uh, PP and PE, the virgin material is actually not very. Uh, you don't have good properties. The reason why PP, PE, and all become uh, they have good properties is because there's a lot of additives that is added. These include uh, antioxidants, uh, you know, thermal uh, for stability, and then for processing, for for durability. A lot of things are added. You know, which is not high in quantity, maybe it's like less than 5%, but it is still there, which is important. And this is something that we don't have much information because a lot of this kind of processing is our trade secret. Everybody have got their own formulations and you know, it is there. So even biodegradable materials like PHA, the virgin material is 100% biodegradable. But when you add this kind of additives, you know, then whether they will degrade is another question. You know, because uh, most of these uh, additives, you know, can be toxic to living organisms or can be toxic to enzymes, you know, so it will make enzymes it, uh, difficult to, to degrade this kind of material. Other biodegradable plastics that are made from petrochemical uh, resources also. Uh, for example, is like PCL, polycaprolactone. Polycaprolactone is biodegradable, but it comes from petroleum. Then you have polybutylene succinate, PBS, also is actually biodegradable. So these kind of products are made, uh, are used for mulching food for agriculture. You know, in, uh, in Malaysia not much, but in a colder climate, in order to keep the soil moisture and also to keep the temperature, they actually have these black uh, firms that they put on the soil. So these are actually currently being made using uh, 
biodegradable polymers that comes from petroleum. Uh, I think even if you have excellent materials like uh, PHA or PLA, you know, which are more eco-friendly compared to petrochemical plastics, uh, the important thing is you must have the proper uh, system to, to collect all these materials after use and dispose them according to their uh, proper disposal method. So, unfortunately in Malaysia we still don't have this yeah. thing in place. But in places like Japan and also like in Europe and all, they have uh, uh, specialized marks on their products to show that this material you know, has to be disposed under certain conditions you know, or information about uh, this material, whether they are bio-based or they are biodegradable or you know, this kind of thing. So, and this involves education. So education is the most important thing. So if you don't have proper education and don't have proper awareness, even if you have this kind of excellent materials, I think it will be better. Most countries, most developed countries, they already have uh, you know, like societies and also standards which clearly explains about you know the conditions, the type, and you know under what conditions they are biodegradable or you know and all these things. Even like bio-based, how many percent bio-based? You know? So these kind of things are very well established in developed countries. But in Malaysia, I think we are only now getting into you know this kind of thing. And as far as I know, I think Sirim has come up with an eco label. You know, equal label zero zero one or something like that. You know, so uh, I think that is something that you know we can uh, use in order to uh, to label and also to to identify the materials. You know, according to their specificities. Up uh, these international uh, standards and we, we use it. I think that is what we do most of the time, which is also cheaper. Hey, we want to develop our own standards and all and then it, it becomes very costly. So currently in Malaysia, you know, we, we adapt whatever uh, standards that other countries have developed and then we, we use it here. But here, this is where I think a lot of confusions can take place. For example, like biopolyethylene. You know, biopolyethylene sometimes it is labelled as bioplastic. And then once it comes to Malaysia, we may think, you know, that oh, this is bioplastic, so which means it's biodegradable. And then this is where the industry might just use it and then later find that it is not biodegradable. You know? So this kind of confusions can happen. So therefore, I think uh, the agencies which are checking this kind of material, they should be very well informed and they should be knowledgeable so that they can advise the industries properly. Industries that want to use this kind of new materials, they should invest some uh, time and effort to do some R&D, to do some trial and error in order to confirm, you know, uh, the properties. Uh, I think that is something, you know, which is lacking in, in Malaysia also. Most industries, they don't have R&D section to, to check materials and to improve the processing conditions and all. So I think this is uh, necessary. I think if the uh, Malaysian plastic industry can, can have R&D or they can collaborate with the uh, universities, in order to test this kind of materials, I think that would be the best way forward. Mm -hmm.